As far as revolutionary theories are concerned, Georges Lemaitre's Big Bang Theory is one of the most revolutionary theories in the history of science. It is one of the most resisted theories in science also. However, it turns out that the resistance against this theory and its implications was largely motivated by ideological reasons. For many materialistic thinkers, the Big Bang cosmological account of the universe had clear theological implications and had to be avoided at all cost. So as you would expect, any theory that looked too similar to the divine creation account as written in scripture was held in disdain and contempt from the outset. Georges Lemaitre's Big Bang Theory just looked too much like the creation story in the book of Genesis, and so therefore one would expect fierce resistance from a community of scientists that were immersed in materialistic ideological dogmatism. And it didn't help that Georges Lemaitre was a priest. However, Lemaitre was not only a priest, but a, also a very brilliant scientist. So what is Big Bang Theory? Well, according to the Big Bang Theory of Lemaitre, the expansion of the observable universe began with the explosion of a single particle at a definite point in time. This startling idea first appeared in scientific form in 1931, in a paper by Georges Lemaitre. Many are not aware that the theory, accepted by nearly all astronomers today, was a radical departure from the scientific orthodoxy of the 1930s. However, by 1930, other cosmologists, including Eddington, William de Sitter, and Einstein, had concluded that the static models of the universe they had worked on for so many years were unsatisfactory and incorrect. Furthermore, Edwin Hubble, using the world's largest telescope at Mount Wilson in California, had shown that the distant galaxies all appeared to be receding from us at speeds proportional to their distances. Together with Hubble's observations, Lemaitre's paper convinced the majority of astronomers that the universe was indeed expanding, and this revolutionised the study of the cosmology as we know it. Now the only question that needs to be asked is, why was it a priest of all people who had one of the most boldest ideas of all time? Well the answer is simple. As a Catholic, Lemaitre wasn't an atheistic materialist. In other words, where non-religious thinkers automatically steered themselves away from any line of argument that seemed to imply the existence of God, Lament was at liberty to explore other options that were not shackled by the restraints of materialistic ideology. Here we have two scientists looking at the same thing quite differently. Einstein looked at his own theory and saw a good theory with strange abstractions. Lament looked at exactly the same theory at those very abstractions that were so problematic for Einstein and saw concrete evidence for the existence of God and the creation event described in the book of Genesis. One man was right and the other man was wrong. In short, the expansion of the universe showed that Einstein's static universe was just plainly false. Now, how is it possible for the same theory to be able to produce two diametrically opposed theories of existence? According to Einstein, his theory concerned a static universe. According to Lemaitre, Einstein's theory concerned a Big Bang singularity, followed by an expansion of the universe. Now, I wonder how many other scientific theories are being relentlessly interpreted in one way to support a certain ideological and dogmatic stance. but with a little imagination, could be interpreted in the opposite way. The truth is, many materialistic scientists are never looking to adopt positions compatible with theology. Lemaitre was a priest, and therefore he was at liberty to pursue and entertain other ideas. He was free and at liberty to explore a world without purely materialistic explanations. When Lemaitre came to Einstein's theory, he, unlike Einstein himself, was radically open-minded to the possibilities it contained. Now, Einstein was not an atheist, this really needs to be stressed, 
but he was influenced by the spirit of the time, so to speak. Einstein was influenced by the materialistic scientific paradigm of his day, even though he was not an atheist. However, for Lamette, who was both a cosmologist and priest, was free to see that Einstein's theory predicted what could easily be interpreted as a creation event. As it stands, Einstein is a chilling example of how scientists deliberately avoid interpreting their own theories in the most obvious way. How they invent fudge factors to save themselves from the implications of their own theories. Einstein notoriously inserted an entirely arbitrary cosmological constant into his theory to balance the force of gravity and ensure the outcome he wanted of a static universe. He didn't want any other answer. Now it needs to be noted that there was no need for this ideological add-on, but it reveals that Einstein was unwilling to accept his own theory because its implications were too disturbing for too many people. However, later Einstein confessed that this was the biggest mistake of his scientific career. Now in the light of this case example of history, I wonder how many other scientific theories are weighed down by absurd fudge factors to accommodate materialistic explanations. Question: How many other scientists have, like Einstein, censored their own theories and mangled them to make them more acceptable to prevailing scientific ideology? This is a good question, and the answer is a little too disturbing.